The video you are about to see, Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing, was made to supplement my book by the same name. My book was published by the International Reading Association several years ago. Its information, based on the research of Marie Clay and Donald Graves, is both trustworthy and timeless. My book has guided thousands of kindergarten teachers to successfully guide each of their students to be literate. You too can have that same success and confidence by closely reading my book and watching this video. Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing is an abbreviated demonstration of two early daily sessions in a kindergarten writing workshop. Each session follows this two-part schedule. Part one is getting ready for writing workshop, and it has two parts, alphabet time and phonological awareness time. Getting ready is initially a time to teach the names of the letters of the alphabet and hear different units of sound in playful language, which is called phonological awareness. Once children can hear the bigger chunks of rhyme, we progress to hearing individual consonant sounds in spoken words, which is called phonemic awareness. Part two is writing workshop, and it has three parts. Writing demonstration and mini lesson, teacher confers as students write, and author's chair. Writing workshop is a time to allow children to test their hypotheses about print as they attempt to write any way they can in a risk-free atmosphere. The teacher guides these attempts in developmentally appropriate literacy ways. The teacher also acts as a demonstrator and cheerleader for these attempts in the same manner that parents do when encouraging their children to talk. The best way to teach the names of the letters of the alphabet is to teach children the alphabet song and how to point to the letters as they are sung. Good morning, boys and girls. You know, we're going to work on our ABCs today. And I'm wondering, can anybody tell me what this is up here? ABC. What is it? Um, it's the ABC. Yeah, that's called our alphabet, isn't it? And it has all the names of all the letters in. And you know, you all want to be readers and writers, don't you? You got to know these letters if you're going to be able to be a reader and writer. And you know what the very best way to learn it is? By learning the ABC song. So we're going to sing that through once, and you try to sing with me. I think you already know this, but let's just check. Oh, let's see. Should we put our little, yeah, there we go. Are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, will you sing with me? And boys and girls, I want you to sing the letter just when I point to it. Don't get ahead of me or lag, okay? So we're going to just when I point to it. I'm wondering if there's um, somebody out there who could come up here and be the teacher and do the pointing. Um, oh, let's see. How about you? Try that. Okay, now remember, we're going to say the letter when he points. And I want to see all your eyes up here, all right? Okay, ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Tell me what you think of me. What do we think of him? Did he do a good job? Yes, he did. Thank you very much. All right, one more. Peyton, and pick a girl. Will you pick a girl? Okay, Lily's going to do it. Are we ready? Remember, only sing the letter when she points to it, okay? Are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, 
L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Tell me what you think of me. What do we think of Lily? Did she do a good job? She was a good teacher. Yes, she was. Many kindergartners have a little problem pointing to the letters as they are sung. In a risk free classroom, the teacher helps the child point to the letters by pointing to them herself from above. In most kindergarten rooms, where I've been a consultant, I normally just introduce the ABC song, and sometimes I have the children find a letter. But because this class is so literate, I also ask them to find and write a letter. Can you, can you find the V for us first? Can you find it? Where is that V? Do we have to sing the song to find it? We can. Shall we sing the song and find it? And everybody yell stop. Do you want to do that, Anna? Okay. And we're all going to say the letters, right? And when we get to the V, we're all going to do what? Stop. stop. Okay, we're ready? A, 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 B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. There we go. Great. Okay, can you make that letter for us? That just looks like what? A couple of sticks almost, doesn't it? Stick, stick like that. Kind of comes in on a Yeah, wow. Look at her V. Beautiful job. Okay. Learning the letters of the alphabet well enough to write them is developmentally a difficult, complex task. For children who begin school at five, this skill is learned slowly and gradually over the first two years, and lowercase letters are not totally mastered until the end of third grade. To understand the magnitude of learning and writing letters of the alphabet, see Chapter 1 for visual attention to graphic cues, Chapter 2 for letter formation is developmental, and Appendix E for a different alphabet form in helping children become readers through writing. Phonological awareness time refers to hearing any size unit of sound, such as the ability to hear and rhyme words and hear individual sounds or phonemes in words. All right, boys and girls, you have been working with rhyme. And I want to just check and see how well you're hearing those ending sounds. That's what we call that, rhyme. So... Let's try our little song here. Oh, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a fox and put him where? A box. A box, yeah. And he's sure in a funny box there, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, he's got a TV in there. All right, let's try this one. This is my favorite. Oh, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a bear and put him in. Underwear, yeah. Bear, wear. They rhyme, don't they? They sound the same. There he is in his underwear. Isn't that funny? <laughs> now, I'd like to know, I want you to listen to the word cat. Cat, cat. Do you know any words that rhyme with cat? Yes, Autumn? Bat. Bat, good one. Yes. Hat. Hat, good one. We've got bat, hat, cat. Bat. Sat. Sat. Bat, hat, sat. A ball bat. A ball bat. And he's telling us exactly what kind of bat. Because when you talked about a bat, Autumn, what kind of bat were you talking about? Were you talking about the kind that flies like that? But he's saying, I'm talking about the bat that does this. But either one of those bats, they rhyme, don't they? Bat, cat. Okay, one more. Do you have? Bat. Rat! Oh, good one. Rat, yes. Very good. Oh, you're very good at that. I don't think we have to do any more with that. You're hearing ending sounds very nicely. But you know what, boys and girls? To read and write, you have to hear beginning sounds. And we're going to work on that right now. We're going to listen for beginning sounds. We're going to sing this little song. And you just kind of stay with me, will you? Okay. 
Who has a name that starts with s? Who has a name that starts with s? Who has a name that starts with s? Please tell me now. Whose name starts with s? Yeah, Sophia, let's listen to that. Same, isn't it? Yeah, great. Hey, you got good ears. Okay, now I'm going to try a different name. Who has a name that starts with N? Who has a name that starts with N? Who has a name that starts with N? Please tell me now who. Nathan. Nathan. Okay, great. Let's listen to that. N -n -n. Nathan. Yeah, same, isn't it? Okay, let's try one more. Who has a name that starts with K? Who has a name that starts with K? Who has a name that starts with K? Please tell me now who. Has... Okay, one at a time. What name do you Cooper. have? Cooper. Cooper. And what name do you have, Autumn? Callie. Callie. Let's listen. K -k 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 -k. Cooper. Does that work? Yeah. K -k 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 -k. Callie. Does that work? Yeah. Yes, it does. Oh, God. You guys, you've got great ears. Claudia, does that work too? C -c 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 yes, it does. Great, great choice. Okay. With the use of this sound matching name song, I have introduced the children to phonemic awareness, the ability to hear individual sounds in spoken words. Phonemic awareness is best taught in playful language and practiced in the process of writing with developmental spelling. Early writing cannot begin properly without an understanding of phonemic awareness and three other emergent reading behaviors. See Chapter 1 for a description of the four emergent reading behaviors. Chapter 5 for a description of how to begin teaching phonemic awareness. And Appendix A for a developmental progression of phonemic awareness activities in helping children become readers through writing. Today's demonstration of writing and mini lesson will show kindergartners how to be illustrators and authors by following some simple writing rules. What do I have in my hand here? Book. A book, yeah. You know, I wrote this book. I wrote all the words in it. Lots and lots of words. What do we call a person who writes the words in a book? Yes. Author, very good, yeah, that's an author. But you know, I didn't draw any pictures in here. There are some pictures, but I didn't draw them. But I want to show you a different book. And this is one that I'm going to leave for your teacher to read. This says, Joshua Disobeys. And what do you think it's going to be about? William. Yeah. A boy who was seven years old, this is his picture, his name was Dennis Vollmer, he wrote this book. And he drew all these pictures. And we can sure tell that's a whale, can't we? It doesn't look exactly like a real whale, but isn't, aren't those beautiful pictures? He did a great job. Do you know that when he wrote this book, he couldn't read when he started writing it. He couldn't read and he couldn't write. He was going into second grade, second grade, and he couldn't read and he couldn't write. So his grandmother and his reading teacher worked with him and they helped him get his words down and his pictures down to make this wonderful story. And you know what? By the time he finished writing this book, he could read and he could write. Do you think the writing had anything to do with that? Yeah, it did. What name do we give the person that draws pictures like that? Yes. Wow, that's a big word to know. How did you know that word? Are you, are you an illustrator? Oh, you're drawing pictures, aren't you? Sure, you're an illustrator. Okay, now, last year, a lot of kindergarten children, the very first day of kindergarten, they were authors and illustrators, just like that. And this is what they did. This is a picture that one little boy drew and he said it was himself playing basketball, and there's his basketball hoop, and he did a lot of different kind of writing like this, and he put some more writing down there. 
And this boy drew his hamster and he put a little red heart in his hamster. Why do you think he did that, Lily? Because he loved him. That's exactly what he said. He loved him. And he put an H here for hamster. And then he did some more writing here. Look at this one. Look at her writing. It's like mine, isn't it? She said, my horse is secretariat. And then she drew all these horses down here. Isn't that a wonderful picture? Are these children authors and illustrators? Yes, yes they are. And you can be too. Okay, I'm going to go through these and I'm going to uh, show you how to do it. Okay, you write your name and date. Now I'm going to tell you, I don't like to put my name up in the corner here. I do like to put it on the back because, you know, I sometimes get such a good picture up there and then when it comes to making my, uh, my paper into a book, I have to... Um, it, it destroys the picture sometimes, so I, I kind of like to have my name down there. If you put it up here, it's okay. You can do that, but I think you'll find that it's better if you put it on the back. Okay, then I have to think of an idea, and you know what? I think of ideas all the time. You're writers, aren't you? So you can be thinking of ideas all the time. And you know what? The other day, I got a letter from my grandson. He's seven. And that gave me a really good idea. So I'm going to draw a picture of it right now. You're going to really like this idea because it really is interesting. Okay, he went fishing with his dad. So I'm going to draw a boat here. And I have to make it big enough so I can get his daddy in there. And I have to get him in there. He always, they always like to wear baseball caps, so I'm going to stay. I don't want to believe it. I think we'll use red hair. Put a red cap on him. Okay. And they were fishing, so they need a pole, don't they? Pole into the water. He's got a pole into the water. Okay. My... Now, I'm writing like this because I'm a big person, right? I've been to school many years, so this is the way I write. But when you write, boys and girls, if you have trouble writing like that, it's okay to start like this. It's okay to write like this. And it's okay to write like this. Whichever one you can do, that's fine. Because you know what? Very soon, you're all going to be writing like this. And then at the end of the year, a lot of you will be writing like this. So, my grandson my grandson went went f fishing fishing yeah some of you are saying it and that's good because you're thinking ahead that's what we call predicting and it's very important in reading my grandson went fishing in Canada Canada is a country above ours. It's a little colder up there. Oh boy, this is really exciting. He had a bite. Something bit his line. It was a Salmon, that's a type of fish. So I need to draw my salmon up here, don't I? Let's see, he was on his, and it was a really big one. I think it was like, he said 20 pounds? It's almost as much as Carson weighs. Okay, so we got our, our salmon there. And he tried around here a little bit. Two is good, 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 good. Two, real, real, yeah. Uh-huh, real, it, yeah. And actually he, he tried to reel it in first. Got to get it into the boat before you can get it up. Guess what happened? He tried to reel it in, it was getting real close. Oh my goodness, watch this, this is what happened. And it really happened.
What do you think, Lily? He, he took the fish. Another fish took the fish. Yeah, and that's not just a fish. He tried to reel it in, but a seal ate it. A seal ate it. Can you imagine? That's really what happened. I'm going to show you his letter. That's his letter that he wrote me. And look what he wrote up here at the top. True. So that I know that that's true. Because I thought, are you kidding me? Can you imagine that? I know that all of you have many, many good ideas. And I'd like to know just a few of them right now. Has somebody got an idea of something they're going to go write about? Yeah, Lily, what would you write about? Your dog. And what's your dog's name? Cooper. And Cooper? Rascal. Cooper and what? Rascal. And Rascal, who's that? Um, we have a black lab and a Pomeranian. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what are you going to write about them? Do they play together or yeah. what? They do. Okay, great. Let's go to your seat and get started. Anna? I'm going to write about me and my grandma going fishing. Oh, you're going to write about going fishing with your grandma. Do you ever do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Did you ever catch one? You want to write about how you caught I, one? I caught. Six. Oh, would that be a story right there, right? Conferencing is the heart of a writing workshop. It is a time for a simple conversation with the child, and the child leads the conversation. This is a very literate kindergarten class. They all enjoy being read to, they can all write their first names, and have some working knowledge of sounds and letters. I survey the room to make sure that all the children are working. Then I choose four or five of the 20 students in the class to work with individually that day. The children I have chosen to conference with today are typical of most the kindergartners I've worked with in the past 20 years on a first session in a writing workshop. Peyton has done a wonderful job of drawing and writing about his dog. I love his colorful drawings. Really, we'll have to look at your pictures. Um, did you write your name on this? Should we put it on the back here? Well, how about putting your name on that to be sure that we don't oh, forget that that's yours. He's having a little difficulty in understanding the concept of directionality with his name. Learning the directionality of print is a major concept for kindergartners, especially in letter formation. And it takes a lot of process writing like this to fully understand it. Drawing lines, as I did, helps Peyton not only understand directionality, but the concept of word, which is another extremely difficult concept for kindergartners. This is why you will see me draw lines for all the children as they attempt to write words. I take a P, I make a P like this, okay? <clears throat> if you turn it upside down, what does it become? D. Now it's a D, isn't it? This is, this is a P over here. See, it looks just like that one. And I turn it upside down, it becomes a D. So it's very important, Peyton, that we get our letters up here in the right order. Can you write your name up here on that line, please? Can you write them the way it's supposed to be, Peyton? And the line goes this way, honey, like this. You write the P. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Now that's just Peyton. You have to get them right in the right order. See Chapter 4, pages 125 to 128, for instructional activities to develop directionality in helping children become readers through writing. Who is this? What is this right here? Can you tell me? That's you? Yeah, that's my dog. Oh, and that's your doggy. And what are you doing? Are you playing? You know what you told me the other day, how you play? You said your doggy chases you. He yeah. did that again. He did it again. Last night. In really? The apartment. In the apartment? He chases you, or is it a she? It's a she, I think, isn't it? Sophie. Peyton, could we try to write that? She chases me. Let's let's try to write that up here. We'll put it way up here, okay? She. Do you hear anything in there? She. She. You hear? You tell me. She. So I'm kind of like, yeah, C, did you say C? Yeah, wonderful. Can you make the C? 
he is able to hear some sounds and make the appropriate letters for them. And his choice of a C for sh in she is a good try or approximation. He is using the letter name strategy. Say C and think about how closely that matches the sh in she. Yes. She chases, and then you said me, mm, me, mm. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, you got it. Oh, this is kind of hard to read, but that's, we can make it again. We can just make it again. There, that's wonderful. Oops, wait a minute. Why don't we look at that M? You find that for me. Will you find it with your ABC song? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right there, okay? Let's try it again right here, okay? Oh, that's a wonderful M. And you know something? Maybe you can hear this at the end. Me, E, 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 e yes. Can you find the E? Mm. Let's sing our song. Let's sing our song. A, let's point, okay? A, B, C, D, E. There it is, isn't it? Can we make that one? Can make the big, well, let's get it up in the line here. Get it up here in the line. We want to get it right up there on that green line. That's right. That's right. Whoops, and I'll hold it. Yes. Oh, that is beautiful. She chases me. Wonderful, Peyton. Would you like to draw a little bit more about Sophie here? Yes. Chasing you? Okay, you finish your drawing. If Peyton could not have heard any sounds in his words, I would not have expected him to write letters for sounds. If a child cannot hear some sounds in the words he wishes to write, the teacher needs to provide special help in hearing sounds and words. See Appendix A for instruction in phonemic awareness and phonemic awareness activities in helping children become readers through writing. Callie has done a very nice job of labeling her picture. Sitting on the couch watching TV with my grandma. Oh, you're sitting on the couch watching TV. What would you want to write about that, Callie? I want to write, um, Grandma. You want to write Grandma? Okay, that's a good thing. Let's try that. Grr, grr, grr. What is here? Okay, yes, we do. Can we make that right? Let's make a line right here so that you can just write it right in there, okay? Grr. Okay, yeah, that's a beautiful R. How'd you know how to make that? Because I, for rope. For rope, oh, you know that on the other ABC strip we have a rope, yeah. Okay, Grandma, do you hear anything? Um, yes. Wonderful, do you hear anything else? Um, hear yes. O. You hear oh, okay, put it in there, Grandma. She has heard the most prominent sounds in Grandma, R, M, and the last A. Good. Grandma. Callie's choosing the vowel O for the last A in grandma is a wonderful approximation. Think about the sound of A at the end of grandma. Does it sound more like the O in cot or the A in cat? What do you think TV would be? T. Yes. And TV. V. Yeah. Do you know what a V looks like? Wow, you do. Okay, so you it would not be developmentally appropriate for me to expect Callie to hear a short vowel and represent it correctly, since kindergartners cannot hear short vowels in isolation. The right direction. Okay, that's a great start. Developmentally, kindergarten children attempt to spell a word by relying on the most prominent consonant sounds that they've heard. Often, this is the first consonant sound. Kindergartners cannot hear isolated short vowel sounds. There are developmental stages to reading, letter formation, spelling, and writing. To learn more about these stages, in order to provide developmentally appropriate guidance, see chapters 1, 2, and 3 in Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing. Trent has written an interesting story about his dad and he. He has done a very good job of hearing beginning sounds in his words and picking an appropriate letter for them. And tell me, what were you going to draw about here? You're drawing about you and the ball, and what are you doing with it? 
And Daddy. Oh, yeah, we need to have your Daddy over here, don't we? Yeah, can you draw your Daddy over here? Okay, that's your Daddy. Okay, and that's you. Mm -hmm. And you said, what do you do with that ball? With my daddy. You play ball with your daddy? You throw it to him and he catches it? Yeah. What would you like to write about this? Mm. If you were going to just write one thing, what would you like to write? I like to play with my dad. I like to play with my dad. That would be great. Can we start out right here? Uh, how, many, how many words we got? I like to play with my dad. Mm. Let's make some lines for those. I like to play. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I like, like. What do you hear? Do you hear anything? Can... Oh, yeah, wonderful. You got great ears. I like, okay, I like two, you said, two, two, two. Oh, my goodness, you know how to write two. I like to play. He also has been able to memorize the high frequency word two. Wow, play. Anything else in there that you hear? Play. Okay. Well, yes, you do. Wow, you have got great ears. I like to play. We're running out of paper there, aren't we? But that's no problem. You know what we'll do? We'll just get another piece of paper, and we'll do some more writing here. You said, I like to play, what, with my dad? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. With my dad. Can you write on those lines, and we can write with, with up here? I have to make a bigger A. You want to make a bigger one? Okay. Oh, yeah. With. My. My. Mm, mm. Oh, yes. Great. All right. Does that, I want to, I want to see if you can find your M on this ABC. Can you point to it? And let's, tell me to stop when I get to the M, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. G, H, I, J, K, L, M. Stop. Yeah. Now let's take a look at your M there. Does that look like that M? No. Can you fix it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's look at it again. I'm going to show you how we want to make that M because it still doesn't look quite right, does it? We want to have it a line, then we're going to come down. These are just sticks, aren't they? I have a mm -hmm. stick here and a stick here and there. He has some difficulty with directionality of the letter M. Directionality of letters is very common for kindergartners. The best way to teach letter directionality is with a moving model, as I did. As I left Trent's conference, he mumbled, Hmm, M is an upside-down W. That is a very good way for Trent to remember that letter's formation. Each letter that kindergartners learn has to be compared and contrasted with those already known to find an identity. This is a very difficult task, much greater than most adults know. Many adults are surprised that children who can say the alphabet and know a sound for each letter cannot write or read conventionally. Learning to read and write is much more complex than that. It is only with developmentally appropriate individual guidance during the process of approximated writing and writing workshops and reading in reading workshops, as described in chapters 4 and 5 of my book, that all children become writer-readers. Reese, what have you got here? Can you tell me about your picture? I'm going to be a witch for Halloween. Is this you? Uh huh. Oh, wow. You're a pretty yeah. witch. <laughs> I'm going to be a purple witch and a sparkly witch. Oh, are you really? Oh, uh -huh. that, that's neat. Um, and you know, you've got a lot of writing up here, too. I'm wondering, what did you write up here? Can you tell me what that is? You would? I like to be a witch and my mom and dad like it too. Is that what you said? I want to be a witch and my mom and dad want it too? Like it too. Like it too. Okay. 
Reese has drawn a very colorful picture and has a very interesting story. And she shows good knowledge of the alphabet. She has made no demarcation lines between her words, but this has to do with concept of word, which is a very difficult concept for kindergartners to understand. And your mom and dad want it too? Is that what you said? Uh -huh. Okay, great. Um, let's just try writing writing those words over here once. I'm going to have you kind of listen a little bit better. That is a really good job. But I think we can make it a little more readable if we work together. You said, oh. I want to be a witch, right? Uh -huh. Okay, I want, I want to be a witch. All right, now let's listen to the sounds and try to write what we can hear. Do you want to have a special pen, I'm or do you want to use this? My... You want to use your pencil? This okay. is my favorite pencil. Okay. <laughs> well, favorite. then that's for sure the one you use for writing. Okay, I, I, I. Can you make an eye? Oh, beautiful eye. Great. Now, you said want. 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 What are you hearing in there? Whoa, whoa. Yeah, what, what letter is that? Beautiful. How'd you know that? Because it made the sound like a double. Yeah, there it is, isn't it? I want. Do you hear anything else in there? Do you hear anything at the end? Want. Wow. I can read that. That's very good. I want, you said, two, two, two. What do you hear there? T O. Yes. Wow, you even know how to spell that. How did you get so smart? <laughs> oh, you even knew that. You knew to fix that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's find that T down here. Can we find it? Yeah. There? Yep, there it is. And there's the O. Oh. Yeah, and that's what you were trying to erase that other one. You just wanted one line there, right? Mm -hmm. I want to, you said B, B. B. What do you hear? B. Do you hear anything else in there? B. B at the end. B E. Great. You can hear that E, can't you? I want to be A. A or A, whichever one. That's an easy one, isn't it? Oh, great job. I want to be a witch. Listen close to that beginning again. Witch. It's kind of like want. Witch. Yeah, great. Do you hear anything else in witch? Witch. 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 Yeah. All right, let's put that down. That's a good try. Okay. Now you got, I want to be a witch. You put a Y down there. Did you want to put a Y down there? You had said a J, but you put a Y. Do you remember? <laughs> don't worry about that. Do you, do you want the Y? You can have the Y there if you want it, or you can have the J. All right, can we find the J? Find it for me with your song. Remember how we do that? Point to the letters. J. A. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So does that look? Does that look like a J? No, I don't think so. That looks more like a Y, doesn't it? I prefer children use colored markers so they can't erase revealing information about their knowledge of print, and erasing wastes time. I allowed Reese to use her favorite pencil today because I could see her thinking about print and it provided some engagement along with my praise. Ryan? You know, we don't even have to we don't even have to bother erasing that. You know what? This is a rough draft. See, we're just going to we're going to cross that out. Okay? Now just try your J, all right? Let's not make it over it, though. Let's make it to the side so we can see it. Let's make it right here, okay? Because you make it over there, I can't read it. Then, then it's not readable anymore. It gets kind of too messy. Okay, I want to be a witch. Great. Engagement is critical to this difficult task of writing. When the teacher understands developmental literacy, there is always something to praise. To better understand praising approximated writing, see Chapter 2, for developmental letter formation and stages of spelling. Also see Chapter 3 for the importance of process, context, and risk-taking to written language development. 
and the five stages of written language in kindergarten in helping children become readers through writing. Okay, Cooper has written a lovely creative poem for a kindergartner. He did this all by himself with no guidance from me. And what do you have here? That's my mom and this is me. Oh, that's your mom and that's you, okay. And then you put a M down here. What is that for? For mom. For mom. You made an M for mom. And actually, me starts with that too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You could have an M for, did you have the M for me and the M for mom? Yeah. His ability to hear the sound of M in mom and me and write the conventional letter M is typical of what most kindergartners can do in the beginning of writing workshop by themselves. However, there are always some children in a classroom who can do less and some who can do more. At the end of each individual writing conference, I make assessment notes. Later, I review these notes with a CID or KID form to help me evaluate the child's ability to communicate a message that is readable. To learn how to make assessments that benefit the writer, see Chapter 7 for Informal Assessment Tools, Evaluation, Using the CID form for Evaluation, and Transferring Information to the WCIG form in helping children become readers through writing. Initially, author's chair is a time to celebrate and praise the young author's work, both his pictures and his words. I was very impressed, boys and girls, with all of you and what you're writing and drawing out there. You are authors and illustrators. And Cooper did something today that we want to share an author's chair. Cooper, can you tell us about what you drew here? On the bridge. He did a bridge. And what else did you put in here? Me and my mom. He said, and this I is me and his mom. And then you drew something around here. What is this? A heart. A heart. Why did you draw a heart around you and your mom and the bridge? Because I love everything. Everything he loved, he put in the heart. And then you did some writing down here, too, didn't you? What did you put down here? M for mom. M for mom. Would anyone like to tell him what they like about his picture and his drawing and his writing? Anna. Oh, I like how you drew the heart and the bridge and his mom. You like how he did the heart and the bridge and he drew himself and his mom. Anybody else? You like the bridge. Do you like to draw pic bridges? Drawing pictures is very important to kindergartners because their pictures serve as a rough draft in their writing process. This session of writing workshop, like all sessions, is based on Camborn's seven conditions of learning language. These seven conditions help teachers provide developmental support for the children as they actively explore and experiment with print in order to learn how to write and read. To learn more about these seven essential conditions, see the seven conditions of learning language and how Writing Workshop employs Camborn's conditions of language learning in Chapter 1 of Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing.